Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna kind of get started back on the tank. I've been sick for a couple days, but yesterday I managed to rent a miter saw, put it on the tailgate of my truck and get most of this wood cut up, probably all of it actually. So this morning, it's about three in the morning. What we're gonna do, we're gonna start measuring out for the overflow. So it's sitting over there I'm gonna measure the center point and then we're gonna get started drilling it. Okay, now that we have the overflow centered, we're ready to drill the tank. I'm just joking guys, this is not the overflow. <laughs> so now what we wanna do, we wanna measure from inside panel to inside panel, which is exactly 47. And then we're gonna divide that by two, mark the center point and get ready to drill the overflow. Now what we need to do, we need to measure the length of the overflow box, which I know is 16 inches. I know the middle point right here is exactly eight inches. So this is, this is what we're gonna line up with our middle point on the tank. And I'll probably just use the template to clip right there, see where their water line is. If it's too high, which about 100% of the time it is for me, I like my water line a little bit lower so I'm not sloshing water out of the tank. If it's too high, I'm just gonna slide it down, double check all the measurements, and then drill it. If it's where I need it, which it's not gonna be, then I would just drill it just like it is right there. But let's walk around to the front and check it out real quick. So with this particular template, they're not actually telling you where you need to drill at. They're just basically showing you where the water line will be on the teeth of the weir. That way you can kind of move it up or down to where you like it. You just have to eyeball it. But basically what you want to do, you want to either tape it or clamp it on the inside of the tank. Take a Sharpie, trace your round holes, then you're going to move it to the outside, line it up with those holes that you made, tape it down, and get ready to drill. One thing to note in my experience is that anytime you fire up a return pump, you're going to see the water level rise about a quarter of an inch to three-eighths of an inch from the bottom of the overflow teeth, so keep that in mind. So this line right here is an inch and three-quarters. Now, I personally think that this is a pretty good line to go by. I really feel like if you drill this low that you're gonna keep most of your water in the tank. However, to the eye, it may look a little bit low. So we might go ahead and drill at one and a half inches, but the best way to do it is to mark each corner of that back panel and then take a T-square and trace that line perfectly straight all the way across just to kind of get an idea where you can get down eye level and just look at it and go, you know, is this, is this where I want it? Because once you drill it, you're going to have to live with that for the next 10 years or however long you have that tank. So let's quickly, let's take a look. This, like I said, this is an inch and three quarters. Let's look at an inch and a half. All right, so this is an inch and a half. And as you can see, it's almost like a perfect water line. Let me take this T-square off. If you can look over there to the back left side, you can kind of see the Sharpie line a little bit contrasting better off of that white stand back there. But I, for me, I feel like this is a perfect water line. It's low enough to where you keep the water in the tank, but it's also... Um, high enough to where it's pleasing to the eye when you have the tank running so this is my preferred water level this is looking down at the overflow box on the back panel and what i ended up doing i ended up splitting the difference between an inch and a half and an inch and three quarters i went ahead and went with an inch and five eighths because i feel like that's going to be the best place for me because I do a lot of maintenance. I don't like a lot of algae around the top of a rimless tank, so I'm constantly um, scraping the water line, getting it to look really clean up there. So an inch and five-eighths it is. Here's a better visual of an inch and five-eighths. If you look at the white sticker, that line going across there that I drew is an inch and five-eighths. And then on the left, 
That was the Sharpie line that was at an inch and a half. Let's get this thing on here. Might have to straighten it up just a little bit, but let's check. It out. All right, so now we got an overflow. We need to get some returns on this tank. So we'll measure that out and get that done. Here's a quick look from the back. And being that I've had the V1 and the V2, I just want to talk about a couple things that I like and I dislike about each one of them. So the first one, the V1, I really liked it because it was a more solid build, as in it was like stronger. And I liked that the weir snapped in and out with magnets versus this one, it snaps in and snaps out like really hard. Like it, it's just hard to get it in and out. And I don't like that. Another thing that I don't like about this one is the back box is really flimsy it's not it's not real stout when that lid is off of there like you can like it'll push in and it's flexible you know what i mean i don't i just don't like that i do like however that it's injection molded and that three bulkheads that would be on the bottom they're no longer there and it's all one piece and i really like that because that prevents leaks Another thing that I really like are these short little bulkheads and the nuts. It's just really easy to get inside the back box and work if you need to. So that's really awesome. So now we need to drill the return lines and we're gonna measure five and a half inches from each corner. And then we're gonna measure one and five eighths inches down from the top of the tank. And the goal with that is to get the lock line to lay right on the surface of the water, the top of the lock line. The majority will be underwater, but the top we want it to be just above the water surface. That way we can drill a hole to where if the power were to cut off or we cut the return pump off, it'll suck air and it won't send 20, 30 gallons of water down to the sump and possibly overflow into the living room. Now, one of the reasons why I went five and a half inches from the corner is because I want to clean the algae in between where that circle is, where the bulkhead will be, 
and the corner of the tank because it'll tend to build up right there and if you put your bulkhead too close to that corner you can't get the algae scraper in between there so yeah that's pretty much my logic here is just to get the return line to lay on top of the water but the majority be underneath the water and then be able to pass my algae scraper in between the bulkhead and the corner of the tank some of you new reefers might be looking for an easy way to drill your tank with a homemade template to where you don't scratch your glass all up with your drill. So this is how you make a homemade template. If you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, you can get a sheet, a 4x8 sheet of dowel styrofoam that's basically like an insulation styrofoam. And you could probably get it at any hardware store or I don't know what they have in like Canada or anywhere else outside of the US but it's pretty common when you build houses and stuff but you just drill right through this with your diamond bit and it makes a perfect hole it's strong enough to hold the bit when you're drilling your tank and it's just perfect option so after you get your little template cut out you're gonna tape it to the tank and make sure it doesn't slide you know tape it on all sides and you're ready to drill that easy And that is it guys, we have a reef ready tank. More videos to come.